On this episode of Narcissist Apocalypse, we talk with an abuse survivor named Georgia. And Georgia was in a 17-year toxic relationship with an emotionally abusive narcissist. It's a story of trauma bonds, tactic changing, infidelity, and taking things out on the kids. Welcome to Narcissist Apocalypse, everyone. And this is a podcast that gives a voice to survivors of toxic relationships. I am Brandon Chadwick, but my friends call me Chad. And thanks for tuning in to this episode. So what is a narcissist, you may ask? Well, for the purposes of this podcast, we refer to a narcissist as anyone who has displayed a pattern of behavior That shows a limited capacity to appreciate others' perspectives. It is that simple. And now, before we get to our episode with Georgia, I first want to thank everyone in the Narcissist Apocalypse community for listening to the show and sharing your thoughts by email, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, a reminder, if you have not left us a review... On whatever podcast service you use, Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, CastBox, etc., etc., please leave us a five-star written review as it helps out the show a lot when it comes to rankings. Now, if you have not been to our website recently, please do go to NarcissistApocalypse.com and fill out our guest form if you want to be a guest on our show. It's at the top of the page. You press the button, you fill out the form, and away you go. And another way to be on our show is to also go to NarcissistApocalypse.com and be part of our Letters to My Narcissist compilation episode. And for that, you are looking for a button on the side of the page. It says send voicemail. You press that button, it records up to five minutes. You need more than five minutes, you press it twice, three times if you need 15. Anyway, if you don't want to read the letter yourself and you want me or my old pal Melissa to read the letter for you, send us an email at NarcissistApocalypse at gmail.com and put letters to my narcissist in the subject line. Other things on our site. We are offering high-conflict parenting courses that can be found at NarcissistApocalypse.com slash courses. We have partnered with an online parenting company, and many of those courses created by online parenting were created by Bill Eddy himself. And if you've listened to our episode last year with a divorce lawyer named Helen, you'll know that Bill Eddy is an expert in dealing with these individuals in court, and now he's helped create many parenting courses to help you through divorce and to help support your children, too. These courses are the most widely recognized courses by family courts across the country. So if you want to support the show and are looking for guidance, please do go to NarcissistApocalypse.com slash courses. And what else do we have here? Let's see down my list. I do this every week because I can never remember. But guess what, everyone? Our Patreon is rocking and rolling. Hi to all of our Patreon people. If you want to join our Patreon to hear episodes that never made it to air, follow up episodes with former guests, and much more, join our Patreon. Guess what else is in the much more? We now have virtual support groups running every Wednesday and Saturday. A big hi to everyone that was there on Saturday night and on Wednesday last week. It was a good group both nights. Uh, we had a good time. You know, We helped people with their problems. We listened. It was uh, fun and informative and it was you know for five dollars a month you get all that stuff that helps support the show if you want to donate more than five dollars give us more than five dollars i'll take it anyway um you know being part of our patreon helps support the show and you get a lot uh for that five dollars and you know the uh, support groups on our Patreon have been nothing short of amazing. And uh, every other Wednesday, we're now going to start doing uh, a a group that is 
uh, an art group. So if you want to do writing or poetry or drawing or write whatever kind of music, whatever it is, we're all just going to get together. We're going to chat and, you know, exchange our ideas and things like that. So we're going to add that in as part of, uh, you know, our Patreon. So that's $5 a month. And I hope to see you there. And now, uh, before we get to our episode, I just want to say thanks to Georgia for being our uh, guest this week. We recorded a while ago and it took me a bit of time to edit this episode. And I want to thank uh, Georgia for being uh, patient with me. Also, you know, this episode is really interesting for people who are in relationships and don't know how to get out, especially if they are married and uh, don't have a job and rely heavily uh, financially on on their partner. So I just want to say that, you know, this was a situation here with Georgia and it's nothing sort of inspirational. You'll hear what happens when Georgia goes out and gets a job and how her life transformed. So I don't want to ruin everything. And I just want to say thank you to Georgia for uh, doing this episode. It's, to me, it's a really important episode for people who are in those situations uh, that there is a way out and your life can be better after. So big thank you from the bottom of my heart to Georgia. And now, without further ado, I'm rambling. I'm just going to get out of my way here. Uh, here is my conversation episode with Georgia. Welcome to Narcissist Apocalypse, everyone. With me today, I have Georgia. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. It's pretty late where I am. We're gonna have. We're just about to have a, a long late night here, and I'm happy that you're here with me this evening. We've been chatting for a little bit. And now I am just going to get out of my way and your way. Georgia, the floor is now yours. I had been with my my ex uh, 17 years. Met uh, accidentally in uh, through mutual friends. I was absolutely smitten by this person. I was immediately drawn into him. He was mysterious. He was charming. was also very quiet. Um, I don't know. There was just something about him that drew me in. I'd never really met anyone like him before. Um, I had just gotten out of a, an, a a long relationship about two months prior meeting to him, so it was kind of heartbroken. Um, I was out and about, you know, going out to the bars, um, just trying to heal from another relationship. We met, and things moved very quickly. Um, It almost, when I think about it now, um, it's like like I had a bag pulled over my head, and I didn't, it's like I, I wasn't, I had no control over uh, falling into this situation, and and it was kind of a in, in the you know when we met I was um, I was in and out of you know jobs I was staying with friends I was, I, I kind of wasn't in a good place when I met him, so I guess it was really easy to kind of you know. Uh, fall in love and and just not worry about anything that was happening. Um, he wasn't living, uh, he was living on couches with other people. And so it, it, it kind of, you know, the next natural thing to happen was, well, maybe we should just move in together. Let's just move in together. And uh, during this time we moved in and, you know, he was, he was working part time um, at a, a bar, and I, uh, you know, we both had daytime jobs. But um, I noticed right away that, you know, with him, you know, we, obviously we were both kind of in a party mode. Um, uh, so him, him working at a bar, 
um, I really started to notice that I was a very heavy drinker. And so together, the both of us, and then I tried to keep up with him. So we partied a lot together. It was, um, I had never, I, and the thing of it is, it's like that wasn't, um, this isn't, this was not part of my character. So right off the bat, you know, it's like, it's just the unhealthy habits just started unfolding right away. The abuse kind of really started to happen rather quickly. Uh, I remember. So be- before we get into the, the abuse aspect of things, um, as far as uh, love bombing and, and trust building in the early uh, stages of everything, what were the biggest things for you that were um, that you found attractive about him what, or what were the things that he was doing that were making you uh, fall for him? Was he um, paying attention to you in a way that you were never paid attention to? Was he making you feel like you were uh, good? Was he future faking? Was he mirroring your likes and dislikes? Um, so what were the kind of like the big things that were going on for you during that time? Yeah, absolutely. I would say one of the biggest things um, uh, were, you know, the, the the charm aspect because he drew me in so, so, so quickly because he made me feel like we were soulmates. He made me feel like uh, he had never met anyone like me before. He had... Um, uh, you know, it was me and him against the world. It was leave little notes uh, everywhere, put little notes in my coat or um, just little, th- little things uh, and, and promises, you know, just making me feel like, you know, everything I had ever felt before was gone. That, he, you know, he was going to take me to Portugal. I mean, just things that I had never, nobody had never talked to me like that before. And it was just easy to be around him. You know, he was. And he's um, doing all of these little cutesy things, going that extra mile on those little things with the notes. You're being treated in a way you've never been treated before. And not just that, you're being treated in a way a lot of people have never been treated before. Um, And, you know, little tiny notes like that, leaving them in certain spots. I mean, that's, you know. That's uh, that's the kind of stuff that's out of the movie kind of stuff where you know we're so right. trained we're so trained by you know, romantic comedies and, and romance movies that you know these little things are uh, the things you only see in movies and you started to uh, get that and it's yes. it's something that you know at that point you're buying into everything and then throwing on on top of everything. With all that stuff, you're coming from, um, you know, uh, a place where bad things were happening or, you know, your relationship before and you are kind of just going through, well, you're, you're young and, and, you're, and you're going through uh, the pains of life. He's going through maybe the exact kind of same stuff at the same time. You're both uh, staying with other people and, you know, you think to yourself, why not? We both need a place to stay. Um, and in a way, do you feel like you're meeting each other at the right time of your life? Like you're both going through the exact same motions of uh, where you are or what stage you are in life? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it seemed... It, it seemed like it was meant to be, you know, it, it felt like, and he wasn't really, you know, and it's, and the crazy part is it's like, he wasn't really the type of person that I would have, have ever dated before, you know, so that really threw me off. Explain that to me. Um, um, I, I had just always been. Um, I had always dated other people who um, had a little bit more going for them, a little bit more, 
I mean, even though I knew, you know, he had a job and he was, you know, he, uh, I've always just dated people who were uh, a little more successful. It was your thought process here, like, this guy is a good guy. Look at all he's doing for me. I'm not, like, screw that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look yeah. past that. Okay. Yeah, I really did. Um, and because he was just so good at make, making me feel uh, like it really was, you know, like it, because we were both kind of in a down place. It was like it's me and you against the world. My inhibitions were down. I didn't. I just let myself go. I know. It may, makes sense. I mean, I mean, you're, you're getting you're getting someone who's really charming. And now you're both in the same kind of spot in life and you have someone here by your side here and you're like, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to get out of this hole together. And that combined with the charm and obviously charming people can, um, you know, talk you into a, a lot of stuff. But both of those as a combination, very convincing and you know, for you, now you're going on the path of, of moving uh, in with him. Mm-hmm. And I guess you're, uh, at this point, yes. that, that hooks you in hook, line, and sinker when you combine all those things together. Yeah, absolutely. I was apprehensive, you know. I, I kind of thought, while this is all happening, I thought, this almost seems to... It's too good to be true. He, there was always that little feeling, that little voice inside of my head telling me that it didn't feel 100% right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And were there any red flags during that time that uh, you didn't recognize as being a red flag? When I look back at it now, yes. He was definitely, uh, whenever I, you know, um, the jealousy part, if I, if I had, you know, I talked about... Uh, male friends or even just past relationships, um, he would get very jealous about that. There'd be times where we would be, you know, him him working at the bar at night, and so we would go to the bar, and there would, you know, somebody somebody would talk to me, and we'd be drinking, and he would get very angry and show a lot of aggression towards. Uh, towards the people, not so much towards me um, in in the very beginning, but I definitely noticed this very aggressive behavior in the beginning. Um, and then I also kind of, I, I picked up on um, the way he, he was flirtatious with other women. Um, and I completely overlooked it. I just pretended it wasn't even happening. I just let it go. I would say uh, those two things, when I think back on it now, uh, huge, 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 huge red flags that I just completely ignored. So when he was flirtatious with other women, did you uh, get jealous at those things? And were if you did, and did you then say anything, or were you quiet? about it i was quiet in the beginning uh never said anything and so yeah so you know so this was in the beginning and then you know i'm i'm thinking back of like um i do recall an incident where uh you know we had just moved in together and we were using uh you know we had a shared computer and this was back when uh uh You know, everyone was still using MySpace, and so he had left his his account open, and I had found this is right. This is literally maybe a week after we had moved in together, and I had seen um, him messaging another girl who was like I think his friend's little sister. Um, uh, You know. In inappropriate conversation that you'd be having with somebody if you're in a relationship. It was clearly him, uh, you know, flirting with her, talking, you know, telling her how good she looked and um, j- just didn't sit well with me. Um, and I did say something at this point. 
And how did he um, respond? It was, that's my friend's little sister. I've known her forever. You're being, you're, uh, uh, you know, you're being, you're being way too out of line. You're being way too paranoid. You need to stop doing that. That's your, fr so then I thought, okay, that's his friend's little sister. Yeah. What am I thinking? That's silly. And I let it go. And, and just so everyone knows who's uh, listening right now, we're, we're talking uh, about, you know, the infancy of this, this relationship. And, you know, this is actually, as I didn't mention right off the bat, th this is actually a 17-year marriage. So, um, you know, this is just the, the beginning of things. And, and this isn't like it's a one-year relationship or two-year relationship, you know, because on, based on your voice, people might think uh, you, you could be like 18 or, or 20 years old but um right th this was a this was a really long-term relationship and, and right now we're just at the beginning and i don't really know what eventually will uh happen so you know after uh that like how at that point did uh things start to progress or devolve so you know after starting you know after being subjected to these initial um, you know, just just really having it like slapped in my face, all of the red flags. Um, I was already starting to feel broken. I mean, which when I think of how far down I went and how broken I felt towards the end. I don't even, I can't even, it's hard for me to even think that I'm still sitting here right now talking about it after everything. Um, it started to, um, little things just, you know, more and more it was, um, you know, then it was like, um, he just wouldn't come home. He was drinking. I noticed the excessive drinking, um, you know, um, heavy drug use. Um, he would, you know, make excuses. I'm wor I work at, I, I work at the bar, you know, I'm, I got to close up. And then it was like, you know, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Um, and I started to really, you know, let him know that this was, um, this is really disrespectful towards me that I, uh, you know, we're a partnership here. Uh, what's going on? This is, uh, you know, are, are not telling me I'd call him, I text him like, when are you coming home? Would never tell me, would never text me. And then if I would ask him, you know, can you please just text me and tell me, like, when you're coming home or if you're not coming home or what's happening? It always turned into an argument, you know. Why do you have to be so, you know, why are you so crazy? And right off the bat, he coined a nickname. He started giving me these little nicknames, which I don't know if I'm allowed to say that or give out the, the nicknames that he, that he started, but there's one in particular, a nickname that still to this day, um, it makes me cry. It, it like, you know, it's like, it makes me, I can't believe that I let him call me that. And even told all of his friends and family members, you know, they started calling me that. I even started using that as, my password for things because I was just so used to him calling me that, uh, called me short fuse right off the bat because I would stand up to him and tell him that, you know, you, you can't do this. You can't treat me like this. You are disrespectful. You, um, I need you. We live together. You need to, you need to, you know, so, one of the first things, and I'll, I'll never forget, I think about this so much, but one of the first real blow-up arguments um, when I started, you know, pointing things out to him was, you know, he said to me, you know, everything that comes out of your mouth is grade A 
bullshit. And um, I just thought to myself, my God, like, nobody has ever said that to me. Nobody has ever, you know, in a relationship like this is not, this is not good, you know? And so it was, it was a daily thing after that where I was always crying. Um, I was always begging him to, you know, tell me where he was. Uh, and I started really to, to kind of, it's like I knew that he was probably cheating right straight away, but I wouldn't, I was like, I was just kind of in denial, you know, because I was like, no, he's not doing that. He, he moved in with me. He loves me. We're doing this. This is, you know, this is, this is happening. I know it's like, it's me and him against the world. Um, And then it would just continue and continue. And then almost every single time after a big blow up, he would always just act like everything was okay. Nothing ever happened. Um, you know, we would go, we'd get drunk together, we'd party. And so it was that kind of a love bombing, uh, uh, thing is not not the ignoring uh, that this didn't happen, but going and taking you f- for drinks and having a good time like that, where you kind of just like are out for a, you, you're going out for a party. So like you know, yeah. you'll do all these things, but yeah. in the end, I'm not gonna buy you a ring, or I'm not gonna you know paint money over it, you know. A part of your bond at the beginning was you guys went out and partied together. Yes. And, and yes. so for and you, he, and- so, well, sorry, it was for you in, in that stage of that sense that maybe that was your original love bomb uh, fix in how things were um, brought together originally. That makes it be to be a really sensible if you think about the pathology of like what he's thinking and and like how you feel and your attachment to him. That feels good, like that is the uh, like a fix or drug that feels good and gets you back to um, the reset of the cycle. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and as I mentioned in the beginning too, it's like you know he picked up on you know, things that I liked a lot and different, you know, types of food that I liked. And so he was, whenever something would happen, you know, it's like he would come home with um, a record of one of my favorite bands and, you know, to make, to, to, to make up to me, to make me feel better or, you know, um, in which, you know, later it's like, you know, the, the foods that I like to eat. And then, you know, later it's like, he never, he stopped doing that completely. It was like once he knew that he could treat me badly and I would still forgive him, um, all of it stopped. You know, mm-hmm. all of it stopped. No more notes. I think the notes were, <laughs> I, I, it was such a short period of time. It's like, I, I feel like it was all of one week that he did that. Um, and it's like he it's like he realized really quickly that he could treat me that way and I and that he could still just continue and you know and and it wasn't very I I mean we were maybe a year and a half in uh living together and then I got pregnant. So yeah, when I got pre- when I got pregnant, um, he was okay about everything, and he was all in for it. And then, you know, I told him that all the drinking had to stop. Uh, you know, this lifestyle we can't. You know, you can't do this anymore. Um, and and it, and it never did stop. So here I am, you know, 
uh, now I'm pregnant and I'm, I can't believe this is happening and I can't believe this is my life, but I'm, I'm utterly excited because I cannot wait to be a mom. Like, this is amazing. You know, that felt right to me. So for me, I was really, um, I was giving it my all and I thought, well, you know, this is the father of my child. So, um, it's going to work. It's going to, we're going to do this. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to power through this and things just continuously get worse and worse. And, you know, he's, he's out all the time. He's, um, he's continuing, uh, the same cycle, you know, over and over. And by this time I'm, I know I'm really, really doomed. Pregnancy goes through, uh, we have, my son, my son is born and, uh, we're trudging through and it's just, it's getting bad and it's to the point now we're like, okay, you know, he's literally like, it's like two and three nights in a row. He wouldn't come home and we go through my son's first birthday and then I'm like, I can't do this anymore. You know, I don't want to live this way. I, this is not, you know, I remember one night I, uh, he was, it was so bad that I went and made a bed in my son's room and, um, and, you know, slept on the floor in there because I didn't want to deal with him. He was going to come home drunk and he walks into my son's bedroom and he grabbed the the baby dresser that was to the right of the room, grabs it, picks it up, and throws it on me. Don't even remember. It's like I it happened so fast. Uh, you know, my son starts crying, wakes wakes my son up. I turn on the light, and you know, it's like I see his eyes, and he just looks. It's like just pure evil. It's just pure evil. And I had no idea like why he even did that. Um, and so I ended up, uh, calling a friend. I, I don't know why I didn't call the cops, but I called a friend to come over and she was able to get him to leave and she stayed there with me and things like this just kind of, it just started getting progressively worse. And so like I said, my son had turned one. We'd gone through his first birthday. And then uh, I finally hit to my son. Uh, I think he was about 17 or 18 months at this time. And I said, this is it. I'm leaving. Um, I'm done. And uh, he got really angry about that. But then it turned into like... Uh, depression where it was, you know, it was, uh, woe is me. Um, you know, I'm not good enough to try to make me feel sorry for him. And I ended up leaving and getting my own apartment with my son. And I remember thinking it was like the best feeling in the world. I thought, wow, you know, we're free. I'm free. I did it. I'm, I don't have to deal with that anymore. And, uh, right away I started to really miss him. And I, it was like, I had found out pretty much seemed like he either met a girl while we were still together or he went and found, uh, you know, met someone right away, but he started dating someone immediately after. And so I was crushed. I was heartbroken. Um, I started to feel like, you know, I'd go places with my son and I'd see families and, you know, together. And I just thought, God, I want that so bad. Um, and time went on, time went on, uh, you know, we never had any kind of situation where he was paying child support or there was a, you know, a shared custody. I would just let my son go and and stay with him when he, he moved into his parents' house. Uh, 
so I always felt safe that, you know, I knew that if my son was going to go over there, you know, with the drinking, at least his parents would be there and, and my son would be okay. And uh, that was really devastating because, my gosh, you know, this is my, my son and my son was so attached to me. He didn't like leaving, but he would go over there every other weekend and, and stay Friday and Saturday night. And uh, this went on, you know. And at this point, this is where I feel like I was trauma. The trauma bond kicked in because I wanted him back so bad. And I missed him. And then I started begging him back. And pretty soon, there you know, you know, my son turns two, two and a half, and then he's almost ready to turn three. And we get back together. And we get back together, and he's promising me the world, and he's telling me that, you know, I can't wait to take you out on on dates. We're going to have date nights. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to treat you so much better. You, I'm, you're everything to me. I've missed you, um, you know, and, and our son, and I want this to work. Um, and I remember he came back and we're, we had gone to bed and his phone starts ringing phone starts ringing and it's the girl that he had been seeing while we were apart. And I thought, this can't be happening. And then he tells me, you know, I broke it off with her. I broke it off with her. She's just really bummed out. But, you know, <laughs> let it go. And uh, we, um, you know, things are good. I'd say for about three or four months. And then the fighting starts again and the not coming home and the, you know, going straight to the bar after work every day. And it's the all around the the mistreatment and the, the, you know, the disrespect and everything that I was so miserable with prior to when I had left him before. And I'm noticing that you know, here I am again, um, back in it, but I love him so much and I want this so bad that we're going to make this work. And a friend of mine had, uh, she had, uh, suggested couples therapy. So I thought, okay, we're going to do this. And we go to couples therapy and, uh, so uh, one question, when you decided to go to couples therapy, was that also, and him agreeing to go, uh, was that also right there uh, a reset button? Again, the cycle from earlier is now done, and now in a way we're in like a, a third cycle here, uh, if we're doing like a little count. Because, you know, uh, one thing I actually wanted to point out earlier, and I hope I'm not confusing anyone, but mm-hmm. no. uh, uh, when... Uh, in the first cycle when you left, it was interesting to me that he had one way of always uh, love bombing you. Then he didn't care to love bomb you or woo you back in any way. And then when you left that time that his tactic changed, you were serious about it. And he then went not in the love bomb. He went in the guilt route. He went in woe is me route. He went into I'm the yep. victim player route. He changed his tactic there yep. to try and get you because the other stuff, you you know, he obviously he abandoned the other stuff earlier, but at that point, when you were on your way out, he did a maneuver because um, you know the other stuff wasn't going to work at that point. You were at, at your wit's end. So I just wanted to point out that everyone that right. you know sometimes when you're dealing with these things. Um, if something that always worked for them doesn't work anymore, they might figure out, let's change the tactic or at least try to. And in your case, it didn't work that first time. Um, but for sometimes for other people, it does. So I just wanted to kind of point that out and I railroaded you and now let's go back to where you were in the story. And I apologize. Oh no, that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, um, 
um, you know, it, it, so yeah, it's all, you know, it, and everything that, you know, all the bells and whistles that, you know, he told me, you know, it's like getting back together. It's like, it's going to be this and it's going to be that. And I immediately fell for it, you know, um, and, and none of it ever happened. It's, you know, all butterflies and, oh my gosh, you know, the, the whole gushy thing, getting back together. Oh, I missed you. And now you're in, in couples therapy. And was it, yes. your, was it when you said, let's go to couples therapy, was he like, no, I'm not going. Or was he like, yeah, I'll go. No, he was very reluctant. Okay. Um, he did not want to go. And I told him that, you know, things are not working. We need to figure out a way to make this work because our communication, you know, it's like, and, and, and when I, when I think about communication, it's like the communication was never good because he didn't communicate. Or if it was communication, it was all a one-sided story and everything would always be deflected back on me. So he was very reluctant and, um, and, we, and I was very surprised that um, when we finally did start going to couples therapy, um, he was really okay with it. Uh, he never uh, made me feel like, you know, it was something that was putting him out or it, it, once we started going, it seemed like it was going to work, you know, because the, the therapist gave us tools on, you know, so you're going to do this and you're going to say that and literally uh, lasted all, but maybe one or two days. And then it just kept, you know, it's like, okay, this is, this is not working. And then he, he started telling me that he didn't want to go anymore. So that went out the window and, uh, then my son is, you know, he's, he's almost ready to turn three and, um, then that, then we kind of go through that. So, you know. With, is, is, so now it's like we've been back together for about a year or so or more. Uh, and then I get pregnant with our second child. And, you know, I start noticing um, with our son, uh, you know, because he, he's getting a little bit older. I start noticing the way he's starting to treat him. In my eyes, I'm, this is abusive. Um, he never hit him in front of me. But now that my kids are older, I have heard all the stories, and I have seen more through the time. But I, so, so I started to notice the way that he was with our son, and I'm, I'm you know, now I'm pregnant with our second child. And... Uh, you know, more things are coming out, and it's just the same thing. It's just the same broken record. I'm dealing with his his heavy drinking, um, dealing with who knows. I mean, to this day, I don't even know. And, and I'm noticing, uh, yeah, the aggressive, um, you know, abusive discipline towards our son, and I'm becoming more and more miserable and um uh, how, how did your ex function with in the family? Did it seem like he wanted to be part of the family or was it like, uh, was he possessive uh, about ki kids, uh, or was like, he wanted nothing to do with them? It was, uh, it, it was more, more or less, um, him trying to, to play the part, but you knew that he really wasn't wholeheartedly into it. Um, I think, uh, you know, he, he started coaching my, my son uh, with Little League, and I think, you know, now that I look back on it, it was it was more of a control thing for him in where, he, you know, he played when he was little, and it was, um, he wanted to be the super, he wanted to be the shining star with coaching um, you know, his son, look at how, look at what a great person I am. Look at the great dad I am. I'm coaching my son, you know, uh, for baseball and, you know, we're the winning team. And it was all just a big ego thing for him. It, it was never, 
Um, it never seemed like, um, you know, that he had my son's best interest at heart. Uh, when my friend, you know, he first started playing, he was, what, six, seven years old. So he was having a lot of fun. But then as he got older, he got really good at it. And he actually really started to enjoy it. Well, you know, that's where things got, you know, they they got, uh, they got ugly in where, um, you know, he was the competitive, you know, coach with his kid playing for his team. And he got, uh, you know, my son would tell me stories where, you know, they would get in the car, he would get in his truck, you know, after a game, and he would lay into him or he'd smack him on the face or he'd hit him on the head because he didn't do something right or he didn't, you know, all these different stories that came out after, which is seriously, like, it just, it breaks my heart, you know. And it, and, it, and it makes me so angry that this was happening. And um, which, you know, ultimately it, it, it made my son not want to play anymore because he was, he, he made him so miserable. You know, so there was that aspect with, um, you know, with, with the baseball. And then. Um, so your husband liked the optics of, of being a family man to the outside world. Look, it's me, my wife, and I got these two kids. I'm the baseball dad, blah, blah, blah. You know, he liked the optics of how this looked to other people, that he was this kind of guy, when in reality he didn't want to be. And it also sounds like, you know, he's your son is the – he he's not a dad in a sense. He sees your son as an extension of himself, and living yeah. vicariously through your son and taking out things on him as if, like, you know, that's not how I would do things, you know. He's not letting him be his own person. Absolutely. Um. So as far as um, things go, uh, when no one is watching – um, you know, does he participate in family activities or no? Okay, so uh I mean, even his own birthday, he always brooded over, you know, or you know, it's like, oh my birthday. You know, and now in hindsight when I look back and I and I think about it and it's like you know, the more he would say, I hate my birthday, the more I would um, shower him with gifts and make him special cakes and, you know, do all of these really wonderful things for him. And he, it was like he never really seemed like he liked any of it. It was like but it just made me want to keep trying to do more. And... um I was constantly, you know, I'm a, I love camping and I love, um, you know, take the kids camping. It, you know, it's something that's, it's not expensive. It's close by, you know, it's easy to do. Uh, so I was always planning, uh, you know, me taking the initiative to make a plan. And so we would go as a family and the entire time he was miserable. He didn't like it, or he'd be on his phone, or he'd bring his little handheld game, you know, his little his little video game, playing on that the whole time, or on his phone the whole time, or, you know, just really um, detached, you know. Always just felt like um, we were putting him out, or we were making him miserable, and it just so... You know, after after time, I just started making, uh, you know, or or then you know when we would go and he he'd be unhappy. There was always a fight. You could always count on him fighting with me, and he would pick fights with me. Um, find something to fight about. Uh, always mumbling something under his breath. Uh, you know, that was a big thing. Um, I always felt like I'd, I'd hear him mumbling something to me under his breath. 
all around the house, everywhere we were. Um, so I finally just got to the point where um, I stopped inviting him to go. I would just make plans to go on family vacations, and I would just, you know, do it for me. And then I would tell him, me and the kids are going to go, and it was never a word from him. It was like he, he was like, oh, oh, okay, good, you know. So, so who knows what he was doing, you know, like when we were gone. It was like, oh, good, they're gone. I can, I can be sneaky now, you know. Mm-hmm. I can finally go and do all those bad things that I've been wanting to do or that I've been doing. Um, so, yeah, that was, that was a huge thing. And um, I think the last time, you know, we all, we, we did go on it. We went on a, a week-long road trip, and, um, you know, half of it was just, it was, it was terrible. And so I told myself I was never going to do that again. Um, and, and, yeah, just, it was, uh, it just, it never felt like, you know, he was into, he was never into it. He was, he was never into being the family guy, yet he wanted everyone to perceive him. I mean, my kids even make comments about um, they actually had to go to uh, a family wedding a month after we had split up, and they had to go, and uh, they said it was so awkward because he, you know, had to come off like he was like this great guy and this great family dad, you know, and family guy and dad in front of all the other family members, you know, and here are my kids who are old enough to know better, you know, they know what's going on. And they just said it was so awkward and so weird that he was pretending. Um, yeah. Yeah. Pretty incredible how, you know, through the, through the years that it's like I, I fought to try and make all that happen. And it was always him making me feel bad, you know, in the end it was like, and still he, I, I don't, you know, and I, I, I try not to let it bother me and, and it does, but, but I'm really working on it. And I, you know, I know he's telling people that I'm the bad guy that I broke the family up. It's my fault. She was always mad. She was always unhappy. She was always this. She was always that. Um, just so draining. So draining and so, um, you know, just I just think about being broken down. Like, like it's like I, I've had, like, chips of my soul just just chipped off, you know. It's like, and one thing I always said to myself, I don't want to grow old and bitter, you know. And I think if I would have stayed with him any longer, I probably would have been going down that path. So I hate to inter- so, so, sorry, I hate to interrupt right here, but I just wanted to ask this yeah. uh, question. You know, you're yeah. now pretty deep in this relationship you have two children i guess your children at this point are um you know you're uh, what like uh the oldest one is seven the youngest one is three i'm gonna say yeah. uh, something along yeah. those lines you're in this relationship now around nine years uh, eight and eight to nine years and yep. you're at your lowest you're at a very low point here i'm not gonna say it's your lowest because i don't know how low it will go yeah. But you're at a low point yeah. here. You have been abused for a long time. Uh, you're crazy making. You're getting no give anywhere. You now have two children. You have. Uh, you feel you have no way out. You go to your friends. They think you're a broken record. They don't understand at all what you're going through. They ask the the worst question of all: Why don't you leave? You know, we all we've talked about this before the show. You know, it's the worst question people can ask, especially in whatever tone comes out of their mouth. You go to his family. His family. You start to realize here that they're not as nice as uh, you think. And you're truly alone uh, right here in this spot. Uh, so, or at least you've 
come to realize that like, oh my, I am alone. I feel completely trapped. Like what else is kind of going through your mind at this point? Because you're obviously in a survival mode. Um, Are you just thinking about your kids at this point? Um, Are you thinking about yourself? Like how are you doing and how are you trying to cope? Are you like, what else is going on? So I, I, I was, um, I, I was a stay at home mom. I stayed at home until my daughter turned two. So now we also and say you don't have any of your own money as well. I no, I don't have any yeah. of my own money and he has been paying for everything. And, oh, and you know, let me point that out as well, because this is a huge part of, um, you know, uh, I, I think the, one of the biggest things that stands out for me in this toxic uh, situation is the gaslighting was probably like one of the the biggest, you know, at this point, it was like, you know, the manipulation and the gaslighting just heavy, 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 heavy. And so with me not working, um, you know, it was always, um, him making me feel terribly guilty that he's putting a roof over, uh, you know, mine and his children's heads, um, and, 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 and making me feel terrible about it constantly, constantly. Um, and so, you know, yeah, I, I have no money, and um, I feel so helpless and so alone. Um, you know, my my relationship with my own mother um, was always um, very toxic and unhealthy, and so I, I really just, you know, it was a it was a situation that I felt. Like, there was never going to be a way out. I mean, I felt I felt like, you know, this is it. This is my life. And I, for the longest time, up until, you know, I'd say even like early last year or maybe the year before, <clears throat> I literally thought, this is my life and this is it. You know, this is what I, this is... This is how I'm, this is, this is it for me. Like, there's no other way, there's no other life for me. Um, and so, uh, I finally go back to work and, uh, as painful as it was to, you know, have to put my daughter in daycare, I hated doing that. Um, but, uh, you know, everything worked out and, uh, you know, got everything got squared away um she was in daycare I started working and I started feeling better you know I was um that was probably the best thing I could have done for myself um and then uh that he didn't like that I was feeling good and he started to get really uh abusive about me working about, you know, my independence was coming back and I was feeling good and he didn't like that. Would always find ways to make me feel bad about it. Birthdays, uh, holidays, everything in between. Whenever it had something, you know, something to do with a holiday or a birthday. Gift giving, um, give you something really nice and then immediately throw it back in your face. It was always so dreadful, you know. Um, It just, it went on and on and on. And so, um, yeah, you know, like I said, I I finally had, uh, you know, you know, the the smoking and the drinking, then, you know, it comes with the snoring and the, and then, um, you know, aggressive, uh, you know, 
being aggressive with me to, to sleep with him and I didn't want to and, you know, being drunk. And so I finally uh, made him go to the couch and this went on. And so that, you know, at this point, it's like we're living in this house and there's so much tension and the years go by and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And I start going on little mini, like, you know, um, two day, you know, weekend trips with girlfriends, you know, and I'd leave the kids, um, home with him and little by little, you know, my son would start telling me like how, how mean he was, or he would hit them. Uh, he was essentially, he was abusing them physically abusing them when I would leave and they wouldn't tell me, but like little by little, they started telling me and I'm finding out everything now. Um, but it was, you know, and, and it was like, he was mad that I would go and, and do these little, you know, weekend trips. And so he would take it out on the kids and he would be mad at me. And then he would be pissed off because I would, you know, I would come back and, you know, you always do this with your friends. And, you know, I, I, I would tell him maybe you should go take a, you know, go on a weekend trip. Nothing's stopping you from doing that. You know, please be my guest. Um, and so this just, this is just, you know, progressively happening over time and the kids are getting older and I'm starting to notice, uh, my son is displaying some depression and anxiety and, you know, he's not doing good in school and, uh, you know, the tension and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And I'm starting to notice things where, you know, I, I, I'm seeing him, you know, he, he was, he was a very lazy person and where when he wasn't working and when he was home, he never participated in anything with us. If we wanted to go do stuff on the weekends. Uh, it didn't help around the house. Um, you know, uh, his addictions also included, uh, a lot of video gaming. And so that's all he would do. Well, he'd be laying on the couch and I started to notice like he'd be on his phone and I'd walk in the living room and he, you know, it's like, you could tell when someone's on and he put his phone down really fast. And, 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 and so, you know, I think in my mind, you know, as I'm getting stronger, as I've been working, you know, it's been a, it's been a few years now, saving money. And in my head, I'm making a plan and it's like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And so I finally get to the point, you know, and, it, and, and, it, and at the, you know, it's like, it just, it literally turned into this house where he was basically like, we were just people that lived together. We barely even talked to each other. Um, anything that was ever said, I, you know, um, it, it, if we said one word to each other, it would immediately turn into an argument. It just, it just, it got so bad, uh, that, you know, I finally told myself, you know, uh, last Christmas, 2019, that I would not spend another Christmas with him. and. I made it happen, you know, I made it happen and, uh, you know, the way it ended is that, uh, you know, me and my kids left for a road trip and I, I told him that I was done. And while we were gone, I found out from my neighbors that he was bringing another woman into the house while we were gone. It came as a real big shock, but it didn't at the same time it was a punch in the gut because I told him that I was, that I was done this time that we can't, I can't do this anymore. Um, but that, you know, maybe he had already been seeing her. I have no idea. I have no idea, but that's basically how it ended. Um, and, and, you know, there was no closure. Um, he took his, his video console and his clothes and he left and he moved in with this girl and 
uh, you know, my, my neighbors, my son's friends that live across the street, they told him my kids know about everything. Um, they had already been so unhappy with him. And then finding that out, you know, they, they, um, they don't want to have anything to do with him and he's gone and there's been no explanation. He just moved on and it's like, poof, all of that just, just disappeared all of the 17 years and everything. And, and I've just been left with what just happened. And, you know, I'm, I go through all of these, like, was I just in denial or, you know, or was I just, I don't know. I guess I was just in survival mode. I guess I was just, you know, subconsciously just making the plan and, and working my way up to finally being done. I was so broken at the end that I remember it was the day after Father's Day because it was one of the last really big blowouts where I left this part out. He yelled at me and really made it so that, you know, I did not want to celebrate Father's Day. He waved a knife in front of my face and, uh, you know, always, you know, I'm, I'm leaving parts out, but he, I started really taking, uh, you know, the self-care level for me, uh, you know, I'm really big into hiking. I'm really big into backpacking. And so this is something that I had been doing for the last couple of years. And it was always, you know, belittling me, waved the, the knife in my face and, and, and threw it in my face, you know, that, oh, you have your hiking. You do this. You do all of these, these things for yourself, you know, and just being really upset about it and not, you know, um, uh, so, so, you know, made it, that was, I remember just, well, I remember feeling suicidal, to be quite honest, the next day, just feeling so done and broken and like, my God, like, I can't, it's like, I can't do this anymore, you know? I mean, even just talking about it right now, like, going back and feeling that feeling of being broken, you know? It's like he never physically abused me, but getting to that point of like, and looking at my kids and knowing that like, you know, they're depressed and they're, you know, it's like you just, you, you took all this away. You did this to us. And to know that he has just moved on, you know, in the flick of a light and there's like no regard, you know, and in a way it's like, it couldn't be better getting my peace of mind back. It, the house is peaceful now, you know, me and my kids are feeling so much better, but it's, it's really unbelievable that somebody could, can take your, you know, take your soul and just wring it out like that and, 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 and not and have no regard for anything. Your your husband has he has he been in contact or did he try in in contact your children? So they, um, yes, you know. So they both have their own phones, and um, they're both uh, really upset because they know what he did, you know, and they don't want to talk to him. He has tried to get in contact with them, and they don't want to talk to him. I've had to uh, set the boundaries um, because he uh, had been showing up unannounced, and um, I, you know, I, w I had to put boundaries down um, and and texting me, and so. Uh, my phone, I actually had to, he had me on his phone plan, and, I'm, and so I went and got my own phone plan. I had to get a whole new phone number. Um, and I, I've had to tell him that he can only contact me via email. Um, 
and he, you know, he still tries. To, my son blocked him because my son does not want to talk to him at all. And as um, far as I guess their healing, um, do you guys have conversations about what happened? Uh, do they go see or talk to anyone, or right now they're just kind of dealing with things on their own? Yes, they both are in therapy. We are all in therapy. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, my, my, I actually put my son in therapy last February because it had gotten so bad. And this is, I think, when, you know, like when the whole eruption of everything was just, I mean, if I could, you know, if, if any one person from the outside could just step inside our house for one minute and just feel the energy, the the tension. I'm pretty sure it would send someone running down the street screaming for help. It was bad. It was so bad. Um, you know, and that's something that's really frustrating is that, you know, there's friends and neighbors that, you know, we've lived in this house. It'll be 11 years uh, this April. And we we were all, like, friends with with the, the families on the street, you know, um, family get togethers, all of our kids the same age, uh, you know, you know, the mom, me and the moms doing stuff together, the, the guys all and, and just collectively all hanging out, you know, families doing barbecues, 4th of July is everything. And, and I've had to reveal, I never said anything to any of them about anything that was going on. So when this all erupted, you know, he uh, was was doing a pretty good job at still convincing them that, you know, I was the bad guy and that he was the good guy. Um, he actually brought, and this is just three houses down from where we live, brought the new girl over there. And you know, in my mind, I'm like, what if our kids were, like, outside? Which I think the day he did that, my daughter was riding her bike outside with her friend. And 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 just him thinking, like, it was just perfectly okay to do. Which I later found out that, that everybody was um, very disturbed by this and told him that he had to leave and not her, bring her back. Um, there was another incident um, shortly after we were coming home, uh, me and my son, and he saw his dad's truck over there, so he went over there and had a, uh, a, a pretty intense blowout conversation with his dad and told him off. And it ended up being pretty ugly where his dad, where he said some really terrible things to our son. Um, so, so things got really ugly, you know, it got really, really ugly. Um, I don't, I don't think he's been coming around anymore. Um, it is a creepy, weird feeling thinking that he could just be, you know, down the street, but uh, apparently they have all told him that he's not to come over here anymore unless he's um, unless he's okay with his kids, which he is not okay with his kids right now. And as far as y you go, and you know, this is pretty this is pretty fresh. This whole um, yes, uh, you know, you leaving. So as far as you go, um, you know, how are you doing what what are the things you're doing for yourself how did you find uh the show and i guess as far as your healing goes like wh what has been uh, the biggest thing for you so far and what are i guess the biggest issues as far as maybe your self-esteem um you know your self-worth and, and a lot of other things that you have been trying to work on i don't even know if you're at that point yet um, 
and like uh, other little things that you've kind of discovered along the way of like, oh, this is how he got me. Uh, like, this is what happened. Oh, I, maybe I should have done that instead. Like, how would I have gotten out of this much earlier? Uh, be- you know, so before I get into another relationship, I have my boundaries uh, better. Are you at a place like that? I've asked a ridiculous amount of questions in this very short amount of time, and they were all over the place. So no. I hope I didn't yeah, confuse you. Um, no, not at all. I... You know, so as I had mentioned, you know, I, it's like, I've, I've just really, I've really in the last couple years, I had really just kind of been doing my own thing. So I feel like I really had been preparing myself for this, you know, um, as I mentioned, it's like, I, I got, I'm just, I'm really active. I'm an active hiker. I go hiking for at least four times a week and, and, you know, at least one or do one or two days on the weekend. And so um that has been a uh, a lifesaver for me. Um and then I just uh, recently had, you know, started doing therapy. Um you know, yeah, you know, the I didn't anta- I didn't anticipate him in this new relationship that really kind of threw me for a loop. Um, as far as my self-worth and my self-esteem, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly getting that back. You know, um, I don't feel like he took that from me. I'm, I'm not going to let him take that from me because, you know, he tried, he tried to for 17 years. He tried really hard to break me down. And, you know, um, I don't think he liked that, that I don't think, I think, I don't think he liked that I had the strength in me. He tried to break down my resilience. He knows how resilient I am. Um, and it's just one day at a time, you know, it's one day at a time. I think, you know, uh, just being able to get up in the morning and make a cup of coffee and sit in my living room peacefully, that's everything to me now. You know, a simple cup of coffee in the morning in my living room. Um, you know, me and my son talk about how we would hear or see his truck pull up you know, at the end of the day, and we both like, oh my God, he's home, and everyone would run to our, you know, to their rooms. It's like, you know, you didn't want to see him, or you know, you don't want to talk to him because he's always going to be drunk. He's going to tell the same stories over and over again, um, and then he's going to get mad and he's going to yell at everyone. Um, so I, I think about those things. I think about that. That it's I don't have to put up with that anymore. I have my control back. I'm paying for everything now. He doesn't get to throw it in my face that he's paying for the bills or that he's paying for the rent or that he is paying for my phone. Me having my own financial stability and being able to provide for me and my kids with, you know, him not having anything to do with any of it, that keeps my self-esteem up. That keeps my self-worth up. And just knowing that I finally have the strength after all that time to finally get away and leave and be free, you know? I, I feel free. I have color back in my face, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't grind my teeth anymore at night. I sleep better, you know, my house is clean. There's no piles of empty beer cans in, in the recycle, in the kitchen. You know, the food, the fridge has fresh food. It's just all the toxicity is gone. And, and it's like, I just, I remind myself of that every day and, and, and that I, I just have to keep going forward, you know, and, and, you know, 
um, I got a lot of work to do. You know, there's there's a lot of things that I'm realizing about myself. I actually just realized that um, there was a, a, a close friend of mine that I had known for 25 years that she's got some narcissistic traits, but I'm realizing that there's people that have probably been in my life for a very long time who were not, you know, not good for me and, and, and just going back to, you know, childhood and my own mother and everything that this is probably what led me to, um, to where I ended up with him, you know, and it's, 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 I have the regret but then I, you know, it's like I have, I, I never would have had my children and my children are amazing. And, and, you know, the three of us together are, you know, we're a strong team and it's just made me realize a lot about myself, made me realize that not only am I like more resilient than I ever thought I could be, but that there's so much that I was not dealing with before that I have to deal with now to move forward, to be able to have a healthy, loving relationship, you know? And I believe that I will. I do, you know? Um, but it's going to take some time. So before we end off our show, do you have any words of wisdom or advice for people who are going through the same thing you went through? And, you know, you've, you've come out on the other end right now and are a real beacon of hope for uh, a lot of people. Um, so whatever words you got for them, let her rip. You know, uh, just hang on to that inner light. You know, I think we all have that inner light that is always speaking to us. Um, trust it and listen to it. Um, because when I think back from the very beginning, you know, um, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to know the truth. Um, and just follow that inner light. Don't let go of that. You know, keep. Sh- and when you finally do break free, don't look back. Do not look back. You know, it's like, again, I can't have the regrets for going back. And, you know, I never would have had my daughter. I, you know, my kids are everything to me. But it's like, it, it, I used to feel so embarrassed. It's like, you know, how could I? go back. And I know there are other people who go back and forth more times than, than I did, but it's like, um, you know, don't ever be too hard on yourself either. I think that's another thing. I think don't be hard on yourself, you know, don't have the regrets. Um, and just listen to your inner light and know your self-worth. And I'm going to add to that when we're talking about regret and going back, you know, we we talk about how a trauma bond is uh, an addiction and, you know, when someone is an addict, they sometimes will go to rehab. And, you know, the success rate of rehab is, they say, somewhere between 40 and 60 percent. So, you know, depending on who you're talking to. So you're going through that rehab and the odds of you relapsing is very good. And then the odds of you relapsing again is very good. You're trying to get off of that addiction. So for people who are listening who are having trouble staying away or getting hoovered back, or maybe you're not even get you're not getting Hoover back. Just to, in the case of Georgia, I mean Georgia just missed her uh, ex so much that she needed that fix again, and it, it happens. And you know, part of the show is to show you that you know you were systematically broken down, and that you have were given this addiction by whoever your partner was, and that at that point. 
your hook, line, and sinker in, and it's very difficult to leave because that feeling is there. So, you know, I really, I really want to thank you, Georgia, for being here. Uh, you pointed out a lot of uh, great stuff today, and just you know, you you are this uh, beacon of light, and you talking about light at the end. Uh, you were fantastic today in uh, telling your story, and you know, for someone who's uh, recently out of it, you have uh, a lot of knowledge about what happened and, um, you know, the way you went about things and, and how you uh, got out and the manner in which you did so is an inspiration to a lot of people. So I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, being here with me today and, and sharing your story. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to speak to you. And, well, you're welcome, and thanks. And uh, for everyone else who is listening, I hope you have a good night.